Hello everyone, thanks for joining us on Beyond 100 Days with Nifemi Okunto. You can join the conversation right now on X using the hashtag Beyond 100 Days. Remember to tag at TVC News NG. Well, we are focused on development in Kaduna State, where uh, the report of the State House Assembly indicting the former governor of the state, Nasir Erufai, on what they call misappropriation of funds, loans, and contracts during his tenure. The chairman, House Committee on Information, Henry Zakaria, reported significant mismanagement of loans, which are were often not used for their intended purposes and secured without following due process. The figure that the House reported yesterday was 423 billion naira, which was allegedly siphoned during the Nasir El Rafai administration, according to them, creating significant liabilities for the state. Meanwhile, the former governor has now reacted to that House of Assembly report dismissing the adoption of that report by the Kaduna State House of Assembly's ad hoc committee, which asked that it should be prosecuted for alleged money laundering. He said this in a statement on Wednesday by his spokesperson, uh, Muywa Adekeye, that the Assembly's call for probe was politically motivated. On Wednesday, the ad hoc committee set up by the state House of Assembly to investigate uh, the contracts and loans awarded under the previous administration submitted its reports to the House. And we also understand that that report has now been transmitted to Mr. Governor, and we're looking forward to see how uh, Governor Bao is going to respond in the coming days. But let's talk to um, a member of the House of Assembly in Kaduna State as we continue to follow this story very closely, especially uh, to better understand what the situation really is in Kaduna State. I'm joined by Honorable Henry Mara Zakara. Honorable Zakariah, thank you for joining us on the program this evening. Very interesting development in Kaduna State, and we're excited that you're joining us to help us better understand what the situation really is. Uh, what informed the setting up of this other committee uh, to probe the El Rufai administration in the first place? Um, good evening, Michelle. Sometimes in March this year, the executive governor of Kaduna State conveyed a town hall meeting where he addressed the people of Kaduna State to tell them that Kaduna City is running short of funds. They hardly and barely can pay salaries. And the reason was attributed to the fact that there was so much borrowing in the previous administration, and that is affecting this present administration. Uh, the governor made it clear that um, the previous administration took so much loan, and unfortunately, they did not structure it to pay during their time. The loan took effect as Adwani came into office. Mm. And that has been affecting administration in Cardinal State. If you are living in Cardinal State, you will appreciate this fact. So on the strength of that, and equally on the strength of the pressure from the people of the state, considering the fact that there are so many abandoned projects in literally states everywhere, the people became frustrated because the moment the past administration left, all the contractors abandoned site and left. So people begin to ask questions. Ah, what happened to these numerous uh, billions of naira, millions of dollars that were collected to fix this state? So uh, as a representative of the people at their cry, we had no choice than to look into this matter. Mm. And um, fortunately, fortunately enough, we dug up some baffling and startling facts that if they send a shock to, to us, you know. It's even more baffling for, you know, political watchers because this is the same, the same party. Um, do you consider it standard practice for every new government to be probed by the subsequent one in Kaduna State? Well, it's, it's not a standard practice. As a matter of fact, we have had governments even before the coming of Malam Nasir Al Rafai. But you see, for, 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 for this government, or rather for us in the parliament to decide to look into their books, it shows there was callousness. It shows there was mismanagement. It shows that there is recklessness, financial recklessness. 
Sometimes there are things you overlook, there are things you ignore. But honestly, if you have cabinet at heart, you cannot ignore or overlook what transpired in the last administration. I have read some parts of the report, and there are damning allegations you have made, you know, against the former governor. Was there at any time that you called him to answer some questions and defend himself? As a matter of fact, um, when we got to work, we asked, requested some books from various ministries and departments. We engaged professionals. We engaged the services of chartered accountants. We engaged the services of uh, lawyers, uh, project managers to help us look at these books, auditors. Looked at the books. We saw them. And then you saw that it's, it, it, people who sign these documents are people who you will invite. People who give a for this for the drawdown of these monies are people you are going to invite. So we have invited virtually everybody that was involved in one contract or the other, or in one with uh, withdrawal or the other. We have invited them to come. We've seen them, we've spoken for them, except for Mrs. Dollar Popola, who headed the Capsco, that is the Cabinet Power Company. We don't know where she is. She refused to turn up. We can't even trace her. In fact, we don't even know where she's in the part of this world. But she's the only one that did not appear. Every other person that signed this document, they came. And then, based on the fact that we got from this document, we came up with our recommendations. And we have handed this over to the executive, and we have equally handed it over to the citizens to look into these books and uh, take it on for them. And uh, probably at that point, you know, they are experts, they are professionally trained. They will look into this matter and then invite other who they think is necessary to give them further details of the investigation. You know, Governor Arofai was governor while all of these allegations, um, these alleged crime, uh, were committed. If they did happen, I was asking precisely if you reached out to him, if the committee invited him for questioning as well. Um, what we did is simple. We invited, like I told you earlier, those who appended their signatures on these documents. As a matter of fact, his, his name, did not, his, his signature is, is not on any of these documents that allow for withdrawals or whatever it is. His name is not on them. The only thing is that there are his own area, when you check our recommendation, there are areas where he, 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 you know, he abused the process. We called his attention in, in those areas. His name, you will see that his name is on the document, on our recommendation, areas where he goofed. We stated it out clearly. Areas where other officials of the government, we also studied it. We, in fact, we recommended for some of the officials that were in the transition that are in this administration. Mm -hmm. For instance, the Commissioner for Finance. She was the previous Commissioner of Finance. She is still here. We recommended her immediate start from the office to allow for fair hearing and investigation. You know, for instance, you know, lawyers would say you don't indict a person by proxy, especially in a matter that has criminal connotations. Um, the reaction from the former governor is that of a political vendetta, uh, the perception that perhaps relations with the current governor has, um, you know, fallen over the, over the months. We've seen some outbursts from his son on social media against the current governor. How do you react that this is just um, some form of political wind chant of um, Erufai in Kaduna? Uh, to start with the family, uh, there is no indictment on him as a person, but rather his government. No wonder people that participated in, this, in, in the governors were all invited. So it is his government. It is possible he himself, like Buhari always said, he was even surprised to know that there was this kind of corruption in his government. It's possible he is not aware. So by the time the authorities with whom we've submitted these documents invite them to come for further interrogation and questioning, Probably when they call his name and say they took the items from him, these people are at that level that will not invite him to come and explain why he did what he did. But as far as we are concerned, we have been able to dig up whatever it is, bring out these facts, and hand them over to relevant authorities. We as legislators, we have a limit to which we can go. We have operated within our limit, and then we have handed it over. It is on the desk of the governor. We forwarded these documents to the EFCC and the ICPC for further action. We equally await to see the uh, next step they will take. The amount we're talking about here is huge, 423 billion naira. And according to you, 
Uh, these are monies taken directly from the post of government without any activity or project attached to them. Are you only concerned about what has happened or what you claim has happened in the past? Or is there a commitment by this House of Assembly to ensure it doesn't happen again? Well, let me start with, um, as a matter of fact, the 423 billion naira you saw on that document, I'm not the one that's saying it. It is the investigation, the report that is saying it. And that is a fact, because these things are documented. This 423 billion naira is not tied down to any project, based on our findings. We have it on record from an audited account of the state uh, internal general revenue that 30 billion naira was withdrawn by the then Accountant General and the Commissioner of Finance. And then this money was not tied down to anything. It was withdrawn cash and taken away. And then we equally have it on record that the sum of 1.4 million US dollars was equally withdrawn from the cost of the Cardinal State US dollars account and then taken to only God knows where. Now, these are some of the monies they, they took. When you put them together, that was how that 420 billion came about. As, as, for the, as for the contractual agreement, as for the fraud committed in the contracts, when you go through our reports in the summary, you will see where every contractor, because the consultants that the administration engaged to value projects carried out by his government, they gave their recommendation, valuation based on jobs done for payments to be made. For instance, they made a valuation of, of, uh, of a region of 60 something billion. And then they ended up, the government ended up paying these contractors 180 something billion naira. So they, they were overpaid. Now, after valuation, after over, uh, we went to do oversight to, to take appraisals of the jobs done, and based on professional advice, we now realize that some of these contractors were overpaid. And then in our, in our report, you will see where we stated it clearly that they should refund the Kandidasi government this money. Now, talking about this thing should not repeat itself again. As a matter of fact, to be fair to this present administration, mm. they are just, it's just one year into the office. Well, normally, when you issue out contractual jobs, it has time frame and duration. Now, by the time this time frame and duration elapse without these jobs done, you see, that is the point we cannot start raising alarm. But we cannot, as a matter of fact, he's working, he's mobilizing contractors to site, they are on the site working. At that time, we are not going to go and be telling them, oh, why have you not done this? Why have you done? Because they will tell you, yeah, okay. I hear you, Honorable Zechariah. I'm sure you're very well. But do you do you acknowledge that um, this is an indictment on the APC, um, all of the members of the House who are members of that party, um, and even the current governor who was also part of the Aerofire administration? Uh, Mr. Nifemi, as a matter of fact, once we once the campaigns are over, the issue of party affiliation dies down. We operate in the house as a family. We operate in the house in the interest of the state. I am from the PDP extraction, but I am the image maker of the house. Can you imagine that? If we are talking about party affiliation, it probably would have been an APC man. But you see, on the floor of the house, once we are there, we come together to work for the common good of the state. Besides, if it is political uh, witch hunt, the governor is an APC man. Why on earth will you want to go and uh, which one is, is, is APC fellow, uh, is fellow APC man. But the problem is that if you're a patriotic Nigerian or an indigenous of Cardinal State, there is no way, sir, you will be happy with the financial recklessness that took place under the administration. Nobody, even if it is your wife, you will never be pleased with that, with what happened during that time. You must come down, look at what transpired. You will have to ask questions. All right. Now, there are so many, so many uncompleted projects littering the states. And then they are making life very, very difficult. And Just hold people. that thought so for a minute. Honorable Zechariah, we're going to go on a short break, and when we return, we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us, everyone. Thank you. Small. Hamed, Chinubu. Do solemnly.
Harry Zechariah is the Chairman, House Committee on Information at the Kaduna State House of Assembly. He joins us live on Beyond 100 Days. Um, the House of Assembly has just um, released a uh, very damning report on uh, how funds were appropriated under the previous administration of um, former Governor Arafai. Honorable Zechariah, thank you for staying in the course on the program. So this document has a long list of individuals that you have thank indicted. You including commissioners, even under this current government and heads of government agencies. What happens to the yeah, appointment yeah. now, moving forward? Yeah, from our recommendations, they were asked to step down to allow for further investigation. Uh, because so long as they're in the office, they will find a way to manipulate the files and all that. So they have been asked to step down to allow for further investigation. <laughs> We hear that your committee's report was immediately adopted and sent to Mr. Governor uh, for immediate action. Have you heard from him? Um, well, the principal officers of the House, of course, the, I mean, the clerk of the House has been directed to forward this report to the executives. I want to believe that uh, by either that late evening yesterday or today, this morning, he must have received this report. So at best, this is a recommendation. Is Mr. Governor under compulsion to implement it? Yes, sir. Well, he's not under compulsion as he is, but uh, in the interest of the people of Kaduna State, who are hungry, frustrated, angry, we expect him to take expedite action on it. And uh, besides, if he does not take action on it, it is an opportunity for CSOs who will write petitions to the relevant authorities for further actions to be taken. We as legislators, we have a limit to what we can do. We don't have the power to execute. We have done our findings into the best and in the best interest of the state, and we have forwarded it without bias. Without bias. I'm looking at the list now. It included the Commissioner for Finance, the Accountant General. There are allegations of some 30 billion that are withdrawn from account of the state internally generated revenue. Uh, did, did you say all of these individuals um, honored your invitation? Perhaps you want to just take us through what happened you know, during that investigation. Did they um, accept, what was their response? Because this report didn't, was very quiet and silent about their own position, you know, where these allegations are concerned. Mr. The report you are having uh, is just a, a summary of what transpired. Our report is a document of over 200 pages, a very bulky one. Uh, we needed to just do this summary to hand it over to the general public. But these documents are available with us. In fact, in my office, I have them. At any time, anybody wants them, he can come, we'll make copies and hand it over to them for proper studies. As a matter of fact, doing investigations of things like this, it is not everything you bring out to the public to let them know. Just bring out the necessary facts and give it to them. We cannot start recording all these things one by one. As a matter of fact, everybody wants to defend himself. Everybody wants to tell you that he did not take it. But the figures are there. The facts are there. And as my, my Oga will always say, Peter Obi, you can go and verify. Yeah, they are in the government coffers. Nobody is indicting anybody wrongly. These things are based on facts and figures. So, uh, like I told you, even if they say no, they don't know anything about it, we cannot compel them to do that. So we now have to work with the facts we have. For instance, the 30 billion that was withdrawn from the account of the Cardinal Center of Revenue Service, the fact was dug up by an audited firm. You know, I don't dug up that fact. After auditing the account of the state, they dug it out and brought it forward. The $1.4 million, it was all glaring. And it was not tied down to any project. So most of this result we got and information we got was as a result of the documents supplied by this individual. And we don't need them to say whether yes or no, the facts will speak for themselves. So this 13-man panel was set up 11 months into this administration, and it happened a few weeks after Mr. Governor said he couldn't pay salaries as a result of the lean treasury that he met in office. So it adds up that... You know, why some are saying that perhaps this is a deflection tactics of the incumbent governor away from his inability to be able to do due diligence where governors is concerned. I'm wondering how you respond to school of thought of that nature. 
Um, if I may, let me start by saying um, fact allocations is not a document that is hidden. When you go online, you will see them there. And then deductions they make after fact allocations, they're equally there. For instance, at the, during the period the governor was speaking, the, our fact allocation is in the region of 11 billion, and then over 7.5 billion dollars was withdrawn to service this debt. And Cardinal State was left with just a paltry 3.5 billion. Now, they had to borrow 1.7 billion to be able to make it up to pay salary. Let me even tell you, the, in, the, the, the Cardinal State Internal Revenue uh, account was used as a collateral to guarantee contractors. And then Zen Bank have been withdrawing money from that money to, I don't know whether they gave contractors money or whatever, but they have been removing money from that account. The collateral, the collateral this was for $20 billion. And this is supposed to be like just a guarantor. You guarantee somebody, you now give that account as a... So while they are taking money from the state internal general revenue, the money that's coming from FAC is equally being deducted to services for the loans. So at that point, you, you cannot bet cry. You cannot bet cry. And things cannot continue that way. And then the reason why the people of the states need to know, if, I mean, if the state is struggling to pay salary assistance today, with the new minimum wage that they are talking about, do you think, how do you think Adnassi is going to cope? If paying this uh, assistance today, if the payment of salary is difficult, the people of the state need to know why, why they, can, they, are, not, they are not being paid as at when due, or rather, probably they cannot pay the new minimum wage. The, state, the people of the state need to know. If the governor keeps quiet, it will look like he is not considerate. It will look like he is not, um, he's not um, sympathize with the workers of the state. And from his body language, you know that he's a complete gentleman. His style of administration is completely different from that of the previous administration. Mm. This time around, we have a governor that is friendly. This time around, we have a governor that wants to unite the people of the state. This time around, we have a governor that even his body language is promoting peace, unity, and mutual trust and confidence among the people of this state. So if he does not cry out to tell people the situation on ground, he will be doing more harm to his government than uh, to, to the people. All right. So that is the essence. And then the, the moment the people get to know that this, this is what has happened, they said, oh, gentlemen, please help us to ask or help us find out what transpired. All right. These monies belong to us. So if, us um, to them. if Governor Obasani, you know, adopts this document, it means that he will have to probe his predecessor and also fire some members of his cabinet. Interesting days ahead in Kaduna as we, you know, watch out to see how the governor reacts. Uh, that is, that... Honorable Henry Zechariah, his chairman, House Committee on exactly Information of the Kaduna State House of That's Assembly. Exactly what... Thank you so much for talking to us. And that's our program today. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Okuntoye. Well, by the way, we tried reaching out to um, um, the media aide of um, the former governor of Kaduna State. We're also working on getting his side of the story subsequently on the program. See you again tomorrow.